I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and Fintech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Diego Zaldivar, CEO of RSK Labs Rootstock. Diego, uh, I saw you speak at the North American Bitcoin Miami conference, and I'm very interested to learn more on Rootstock and what you guys are doing with the side chains in Bitcoin. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. My, my pleasure as well. You're very welcome. So let's kick this off by getting a little bit of background on RSK Labs, uh, an overview of how long you guys have been working on the project and what solutions you're trying to provide with your side chains to Bitcoin. Yes, we, we have been working since 2015. We started with the idea of extending Bitcoin capabilities to, to integrate smart contracts into Bitcoin. Um, and as we work on it, um, the, the vision evolved into a full stack of uh, decentralized infrastructure uh, that will provide the services, the basic services that are needed to create a, an inclusive financial ecosystem. Uh, our main goal is to enable financial inclusion through the use of decentralized platforms. So that's our goal, as a, our purpose as an organization. That's great. And I know, you know, Bitcoin is great in its fundamentals, but I guess it doesn't have everything that's needed to create that inclusiveness that you guys are aiming for. So how exactly does this sidechain incorporate, you know, more usability for people and an easier understanding rather than just transferring Bitcoin to somebody? Yeah, well, indeed, uh, we try to use Bitcoin as, as an inclusion platform first. And then we realized what was missing in Bitcoin in order to achieve that goal of providing services to those excluded in our society. And one thing we realized is that uh, you need a stable asset because people excluded in our society, uh, they have a very short term financial horizon. So they, they can plan maybe a few days ahead. So the volatility of Bitcoin is not suitable for, for that kind of users. And so that was one, one element. We wanted to enable you know, the creation of a stable assets, tokenizing and other assets. Uh, and at the same time, we didn't want to create a system that was dependent on third parties because um, we thought that you know, the, it was very sensitive managing the money of the poorest people in the world. So we needed to have business logic that was running on a decentralized platform this in the same way as Bitcoin runs its transaction processing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the other thing that we brought with RSK into the Bitcoin ecosystem, the, the business logic uh, execution in a decentralized mm -hmm. fashion. Uh, so the combination of both things are the key uh, to create an inclusive financial ecosystem. That's great. And I know, you know, in South America, there are a lot of problems with traditional currencies and cryptocurrencies and these new forms are getting much more popular. So looking forward, do you anticipate these people using the rootstock coin um, to, to store the value and transfer? Um, is that specifically or is it part of improving Bitcoin itself? And, and is it for the originally for the people of South America where you were trying to target these solutions? Well, one thing is that we decided not to have our a separate currency in the RSK platform. So the RSK native currency is a smart Bitcoin, and each smart Bitcoin is pegged one-on-one -on -one to Bitcoin. But the financial system we envision is one where you will have pesos or the local currency of each country uh, issued by a smart contract uh, that will have full collateral in Bitcoin. So it's, it's kind of issuing native or local currencies, uh, but fully backed by Bitcoin, going back to the concept of the gold standard. Uh, in that way, you know that each peso issued on the RSK or each dollar issued on the RSK network will have full collateralization, full backing uh, in, in the native crypto assets. Mm -hmm. So we don't see people in the slums or in the poor areas directly uh, using Bitcoin, but they will use stable assets. And if they manage to have some savings, they might choose to have 
more long-term savings in the form of Bitcoin or, or other stable assets. Um, but yeah, so, so that's one of the key elements. Uh, RSK enables to create stable assets, enables also to create reputational information. So you can create reputational identities that might be used as collateral to access to basic financial services. So it's both things, having stable assets and reputational identities. Yeah, that's great, Diego. That's, that's amazing that you guys are doing this. And as you mentioned at the beginning, you've been developing or you started this in 2015. Um, I'm interested to know, you know, has this been four years straight of development? And when was the major release or at what stage of development are you guys at? And I'm sure you're continuing with that as well. Yes, the, the first goal we wanted to achieve was to, to have a smart contracts on top of Bitcoin and secured by the Bitcoin network. And we achieved that goal in January 2018, uh, a year ago. And, you know, soon after that, different projects started deploying their solutions on top of RSK. And um, indeed, there is a project that is going to deploy this year that is uh, creating stable assets fully collateralized with Bitcoin and other projects that are creating stable assets uh, on top of RSK. Mm -hmm. so, so this year will be the year where we will start seeing like real use cases emerge. Also, we have been working on the slums of Buenos Aires and with the international, with the, sorry, Inter-American Development Bank uh, and the Bitcoin Argentina NGO uh, to create the first version of this inclusive financial ecosystem and we will see the first release of that system this year. So I would say it was mostly two years of full development. And now this year was triggering or bootstrapping the ecosystem. Uh, and also last year, something very important started that it was a new project to create an upper layer on top of RSK that will create, offer infrastructure, decentralized infrastructure services on top of RSK, like data storage, um dream resolution um payment channels different solutions that are needed to scale this technology further and that's project it's called uh, reef os and we launched that last year so that's great diego sounds like you guys have done a lot already and that now you're expanding into new horizons so and i like how you mentioned that you're working with some Amer uh, inter-american you know financial systems and you do have to work with traditional uh, financial systems if you're going to be able to peg these currencies to some fiat currencies. So in the traditional financial industry, you know, there's a lot of um, gouging by some banks uh, uh, and, and profit models and business models built into the system. Now, does Rootstock have a business model behind it? And is it driving revenues to a foundation? Or how does that work for Rootstock? Well, RSK... Uh, has a business model that is very straightforward. We have a revenue sharing with the Bitcoin miners. Every time a Bitcoin miner processes a transaction on RSK, uh, they share 20% of that profit with RSK. And those funds are deployed, basically are used to continue software development too, and to support other key actors on the network, like the full nodes and the federation members that control the, the movement of value between RSK and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and in the case of Reef, it's a different uh, model. It's a different model. Reef has its own token. The idea of Reef is to provide these peer-to-peer uh, -peer decentralized infrastructure services, not only in RSK, but in other smart contract enabled platforms in the future. Uh, so it has separate token that can be ported to other uh, platforms. And in the case of Reef, is basically, you know, uh, revenue streams based on offering decentralized infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, uh, Reef is creating the technology and also joining the network and offering services and, and profiting from that. So that's the way this whole organization will be sustainable in the long term. Although it's a purpose-driven organization, not a non-for-profit, it's a non-for-profit organization. Yeah, that's great, Diego. It sounds like you guys have a lot of uh, potential with Reef, and I'd like to take a look at you know the roadmap for 2019. Is the major focus on Reef 
or are you guys co-developing with RSK and, and Reef? Um, and what do you expect to come out with, you know, in the next six months or throughout 2019? What are the big milestone releases? Well, uh, our division we have been chasing and communicating since 2015 is that what we are building with this full stack between Bitcoin, RSK and Reef is what we call the, as we name as the internet of value. It's, it's a new internet for the transfer of value. Uh, so, so for us, the synergies between all the platforms are, are key. It's, it's like, um, you know, each component as a separate company is not as powerful as having all the components interacting together. So we see the development of RSK and Reef as a side-by-side -side process. And one example of that is that in the next six months, we will release the first, uh, the second module of Reef, that is uh, Reef Payments, that is an off-chain payment system, much like Lightning for Bitcoin, that is called Lumino. And Lumino will profit from some improvements we will do in RSK that are compression protocols called Lumino LTCP, Lumino Transaction uh, Compression Protocol, uh, that will enable uh, an efficiency increase of maybe 40, 50% on the transaction cost or on, on chain and 10x the transaction output and, and cost lowering on the upper layer, on the reef layer. So, that implies that you can process thousands of transactions per second with brief payments with Lumino mm -hmm. and uh, lower the transaction cost to a fraction of a cent, which is key for financial inclusion as well. So, so we see the development of, of both as, a, as one unified uh, process. And at the end of the year, we will have the full stack of Reef uh, running on top of, of RSK. And, and I think that will be the moment where the people will see the full potential of what we are doing and we'll see many use cases that were not possible until today uh, emerge and, and blossom in, in our networks. That's great, Diego. I like that you guys are working with it side by side. And I completely agree with you that, you know, especially in the blockchain industry, interoperability is key to adoption. And, uh, and we should all be working together to develop infrastructure that allows more people to benefit from the advantages of this technology. So um, I'm, I'm right in line with what you guys are doing there. <laughs> yes, yes. We, we have that vision uh, that you mentioned that because in RSK we, are, we have been talking and, and working on, on integrating RSK with Litecoin and also some teams of Bitcoin Cash uh, reach out to, to us and other blockchain uh, protocols that don't have smart contracts are working with RSK. And as I mentioned, the vision of Reef is the same, is that we are integrating all these peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure services on RSK, but the idea is in the future, it might be integrated in Ethereum, EOS, any smart contract enabled platform that is missing mm -hmm. these additional components can profit from this uh, third layer on top. So um, I agree with you that the, the interoperability and, and creating a mesh, a network of networks for the transfer of value uh, creates a system that is more resilient and more valuable for humanity as a whole. And that's our end game. That's what we want to, to build and, and, and showcase to the world, no? that this is possible, that this, this uh, has uh, you know, immense potential for, for humanity. Great. Good for you guys. And you know, to, to touch on that, it is harder to develop a system that is interoperable with everything that's already running rather than just making a new system altogether. So do you foresee challenges in the development um, or other challenges as, as you know, you're pushing out this infrastructure for Rift this year? Uh, what, what challenges do you foresee in the development and as you guys are moving along? Yes, we, we definitely the more systems you integrate, the, the tougher it is because uh, you know, each system has its complexities. I don't know Bitcoin is U UTXO is a transaction based data structure. Uh, Ethereum or RSK are account based data structure. So, so you need to adapt to each platform. That's why we try to choose the path of less resistance. No, it's like we we started with Bitcoin. Then Litecoin is pretty easy because it, it shares the same structure as Bitcoin. Uh, you know, Ethereum is is sharing a lot. 
of the underlying structure with RSK. So that will be the next move. And then, you know, the other systems maybe will take longer. But I think once people see the value of these, the, the other projects will also be willing to collaborate. So this is a joint effort. Integrating the systems is a joint effort and not only we, we think this is only possible if we work as a community. If it's a community effort, uh, yeah. I, I don't think we, we can do this alone. I mean, we want to put our best effort to, to make this as easy as possible for everybody, but I think it should be a joint effort to I completely to agree. I, and it's, it's all about growing the community and having people involved in the project. So are you looking for more people to become involved in the project, uh, in the development, social communities? Um, how can people reach out to you guys and join the community if they want to get involved? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we are doubling the size of the company, of the organization this year. So that's one thing. But also what you're mentioning is key. We want this to be uh, uh, all the platforms we are building. We want to be to, them to be community-driven uh, platforms. So, so that's something we are encouraging, and very likely we will create different incentive programs so people can contribute to the platforms and uh, and participate. I, I think the best way to reach us uh, is by going to our websites to repos.org or to rsk.co and and there you will see all the connections i mean all the the contact info and and documentation and ways to understand what these platforms do how they interact with each other and how you can collaborate with the building of of the technology great diego i will leave the descriptions uh in the description i'll leave the links to you guys communities so people can join and that's all the time that we have today but I really appreciate you explaining uh, what's going on with RSK and Riff. And it sounds like you guys are doing amazing things. So I'm looking forward to following up in the coming months uh, when you guys have released some of the infrastructure. Uh, let's speak again and, and re, um, you know, reiterate and see where, where RSK is going and uh, how it's flourishing. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much, Ashton. And uh, next time we will be displaying some real use cases. Uh, to, to take these ideas into action and, and display the power of these technologies in our societies. Thank you. Thank you.